How is Ren's mother quicker to block women who bring to her attention what she's doing to her child isn't okay? But here, I go on Instagram and found Jordan in 0.2 seconds. Jordan here likes to follow children. Pedos like this scare me because they don't care if you know. He didn't even try to hide his name, his face. It gets worse. Went to the TikTok account just to see how easy it would be to find a pedo. Again, took me 0.2 seconds right at the top of the list. Look who else isn't blocked. Was the one of her shaving her lady parts and using a tampon. Go figure. There is no reason a little girl needs to be next to repos of an older woman's bosoms and next to another young girl where suggestive content was made of something being sprayed in her face it being portrayed as something it wasn't having children on the internet is a bigger topic i posted a seemingly innocent video of my child my take on it was the presentation how we present them some viewers have anonymously added your video to favorites. It doesn't matter how you present them. It doesn't matter if it's innocent. I've come to find out, thanks to Dr. Leslie, they don't care. Thanks to AI, your child's face could be on an AI body in seconds and then on the dark web. Which is why moving forward, I have decided to take a pause on posting my children while I reflect on how I will be moving forward. If you're a parent who goes online, there are chances that you've been bombarded with content from other parents thanks to the algorithm. And if you've been scrolling through TikTok or YouTube, you've probably seen tons of videos about Ren and Jacqueline. But what's the deal about Ren and Jacqueline? Why is everybody just talking about Ren and Jacqueline? Ren, she's this little preschooler who is sadly a TikTok sensation and this account is run by her mom Jacqueline. It's very insane because Ren and Jacqueline, the TikTok account actually has over 17 million followers but their account has been stirring up a lot of controversies over the past few years. I would say two years at least because the first controversy happened in 2022. In 2022, the uproar was so big, like there was literally a very big uproar about this account and this actually led to so many social media campaigns. It even made it to Rolling Stone and people actually talk about parents who share their kids online. They have been used as an example. Like we know, Jacqueline, she's not the only parent who actually puts her kids on social media. Lots of parents do it. Like you see, family vloggers, they actually do share their lives on social media daily and their popularity is often because they just seem like a very happy family. But there is a problem. Some of these channels aren't even as happy as they look. One thing about this whole family vlogging is that there are no rules that says that parents would have to pay their kids for being filmed all the time and some families are even mistreating their kids while making lots of money from their videos aka the 8 passengers. Yo, I really want to talk about that video, I want to talk about that whole situation but the thing is I don't even know where to start. First of all, it started as a means of exploitation and now it's gone into a true crime case so like I don't even know where to start from, but one day I would. Back to the topic at hand. So the Ren and Jacqueline situation is very important because it just shows why it's not okay to put kids at the center of social media attention no matter what. Hi guys, my name is Jo and if this is your first time, thank you so much for stopping by. Kindly like, share this video and it will mean the whole world to me. Also on this channel, I just speak about anything that I want to speak about and I shed more educative light on different moments, whether they are viral or not. Kindly subscribe if you haven't and if you want to. If not, thank you for watching and comment your thoughts and please engage with this video as much as you can because it's just going to let the algorithm push me and know that all people are interested in this video and other people get to find me. That being said, let's get right back into this video. Who are Ren and Jacqueline? So as I earlier mentioned, Jacqueline and her daughter Ren, they have been very active on TikTok for quite some time. However, their channel stands out from the typical family or mommy channel because it actually focuses exclusively on Ren and Ren is just four years old. Usually, 
channels that feature children they become popular by showing the daily lives of the entire family or sometimes parents just share activities like meal preparation or family challenges so while Jacqueline makes occasional appearances, every video solely centers on Ren. Additionally, the content of this video varies widely. Sometimes it shows Ren just chatting up with her mom in the morning or like maybe she's identifying pictures or she's participating in TikTok challenges or sometimes it's showing off her outfit. Obviously, this is a very sensitive topic so I do not want to like say explicit things because this is a child but there are some of these challenges that have been saved countless of times and has been shown in very suggestive ways which on the surface level if i'm watching you normally i'm like oh this looks okay but someone was like how is this okay look at this very well and you're like oh my god yes i can see it but i'm not going to say but if you know you know if you know what i'm saying People have come out to say that it's very unusual to dedicate a channel solely to filming a four-year-old without broader themes like parenting or family dynamics. For example, I have an eight-year-old sister, which I've said so many times. So I have an eight-year-old sister and she watches children's YouTube channel. There are children's YouTube channel where these children, they act with their dad or their mom, but it kind of primarily focuses on them. But you would know that you're learning something from this. So either they are playing with their toys or playing with their pillow. I said pillow because I'm saying pillow there. <laughs> but because I'm saying pillow. But either they are playing with their toys or they are playing with their siblings or their animals. You just get entertained and the child gets entertained. It's solely for children. Sometimes when I'm watching it, I'm like, what's my sister even enjoying from this? Because like, obviously it's normal children thing because... Normally, an adult will not really enjoy it, but a child will enjoy it, if that makes sense. So, the fact, the difference between all these channels or all these accounts and Rent's account is that the theme that surrounds Rent's account does not even focus on, like, maybe them doing activities or parenting or, like, family dynamics. It may show, like, oh, she's doing all these challenges or saying this or that or whatever, but like if you look deep into it it's very suggestive basically the concern actually escalated when viewers actually noticed that there are signs that the account might be attracting the attention of predators for one it is alarming that an account featuring a four-year-old child has 17 million followers and i know some people will be like okay it's an account why are people first that it has 17 million followers it's because of the kind of content that that have been shown if that makes sense we'll get to all that later i think it's because of the kind of content that have been shown and the kind of videos that have been saved and how suggestive that these videos actually look even though in the surface level they look innocent if that makes sense hopefully i'm making sense totally agree with what you're saying but i also thought the whole three-year-old eating a hot dog sounded very specific and when i put into search this is what came up The fact that I had never seen that video but knew it was going to be that child should be alarming. And this actually leads us to what is known as the Ren Effect. So what is the Ren Effect? I personally have actually coined my own definition of the Ren Effect and you had better enter some scholar book or dictionary.com or something something or urban dictionary but anyways i have coined my own definition of the rain effect because when i went online i was just in the rain effect but there was no particular definition just examples but i coined my own definition of the rain effect so the rain effect actually represents the ethical concerns that surrounds how children's innocence is impacted by their online presence which raises questions about parental responsibilities and the risks that are involved in sharing personal content on social media ciao okay <laughs> i feel like a scholar sharing adorable videos of a child online might seem harmless 
but it's not that simple. In 2022, people just started worrying about Jacqueline's constant posting of her daughter and they suggested that it could be very, very risky. The big concern when she posted her daughter's video was the fact that people were really, really saving these videos. And child safety experts have actually warned that lots of saves could attract predators. For context, some videos, like there's a video of Ren eating a corn dog at a fair and this video got saved 375,000 times. My highest viewed video on TikTok is I think 4 million or is it 4 or 5 million? I don't think I had as much saves on that video and even though surface level, I say surface level, even though surface level it may seem very innocent some people have actually found this suggestive especially with strange comments below like people have the audacity my keep my ring keeps falling people literally have the audacity to also comment on these videos also i want to say the thumbnail that she chooses they are very very suggestive and very very appalling this worry has sparked the rent effect which has actually made parents to delete their kids content online just to protect them from predators. If your children are on social media and you haven't heard the story about what's going on with Ren, you need to listen up. Ren is three and she's absolutely adorable, absolutely adorable. Her mom posts lots and lots of videos and they have 17.3 million followers on TikTok, which I had a hard time wrapping my head around. It's just videos of a toddler. What moms are noticing is how many times these videos of Ren are being saved. I'm not sure if you can actually see this when my icons show up here, but this has been saved 10,000 times. This one of a three-year-old in a crop top has been saved 45,000 times. Ren eating a hot dog at a fair 375,000 times. Then people started noticing what happens when you type Ren into the search bar. All these searches come up and that's obviously the top searches for this thing. Um, most of them are gone now, but some of them were like Ren scandalous outfits. She's three. One that still pops up is Ren Pickle. People started noticing really disgusting comments that men were leaving and um, they got really, really upset about it. Now, I'm not going to post any of the really disgusting comments, um, but I did notice that somebody posted this. She is so mature for her age. And I started thinking about why was this comment bad? And then I realized I actually posted a video of my own daughter on my TikTok. My daughter does not have a TikTok because of all the disgusting things that happen on TikTok. But my daughter was doing the 321 bang challenge and I posted it. And I got this comment. Your daughter is kind of cute. Not gonna lie. Hey, Seuss. I thought that comment was innocent when it was posted, but it's not. And then I realized that the video of my daughter had been saved way too many times. So I removed the video and then I went to her Instagram page, which is private. And I found accounts like this that were following my daughter. My daughter is 12 and a half. The issue with all of the saves and the follows are that people are watching your children and doing disgusting things. <sighs> Protect your kids. Digging deeper, people have also found more troubling content. For example, people have found that older men are following accounts with kids. People have found that older men, predators, are also sharing Ren's video with adult content, which Jacqueline's mom actually replied to that, which we'll get to in a second. And what's very creepy is that these children, they also have fan accounts, and these fan accounts might be run by predators. Yes, guys. Before we go any further, I just want to use this opportunity to tell you guys about my journal. Let me share with you how my journey actually inspired an amazing journal. So before 2021, I just scribbled thoughts and I just diaried. I would say I just diaried, I just journaled, whatever. But then I discovered powerful techniques like the law of attraction and gratitude journaling. Now, let me just introduce you to this journal, which is curated by me. It is not your typical journal, it's not your typical diary. It's very comprehensive and it is a very comprehensive tool for deep thinking and also for growth. With thought-provoking prompts and reflection pages, 
this journal is a personal guide every day you have space to set intentions and also track progress and even after you finish there's more prompts to keep you going this journal has themes like love attraction scripting brain dump shadow work weekly reflection dream journaling like you know when you wake up and you can't remember your dream just remember that this journal is beside you like literally everything that is in different journals is just in one journal another thing that's very cool about this journal is that it is not dated and you can start at any time so this journal is for 31 days and i made it 31 day journaling because because sometimes heavy journals can be very intimidating so whether you're new or whether you're a pro at journaling this 31 day journal just has you covered and it is top quality is also available in hardcover or paperback so are you ready for a journey of self-discovery get the ultimate manifestation and dream journaling by me today the link is in my description box and it's also in my profile now let's go to Jacqueline's response as of now Jacqueline she's not yet responded last I checked but in 2022 when this actually got very very big she actually responded and when users first started criticizing Jacqueline in 2022, she responded with a video claiming that she had consulted specialists, including the FBI. And the FBI actually found no evidence of rent images being misused online. So I don't know why you people are busy taking Panadol for her own headache. People should let her rest. I don't know why you, why you people why you people bring it up in 2024. If you guys can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. Anyways, she dismissed this backlash as a conspiracy theory. So that being said, I'm going to play this video so we we'll watch it together. The past few months have been incredibly distressing, and I've learned a lot. What started out as a hobby to make a digital scrapbook for my daughter Ren grew into an interesting role for me as a single stay-at-home mom. Ren is my number one priority, and her upbringing and safety are my top job 24 hours a day. This account has allowed me to provide for my daughter and to set aside money for her future. I'm not sure how this conspiracy theory got started and spiraled out of control. What you need to know is that no law enforcement agencies I conferred with, including the FBI, have found any proof that my daughter's likeness appears on inappropriate websites. First of all, I'm not going to believe that she went to the FBI to tell the FBI to check if her daughter's videos are on the dark web. I'm not going to believe that. If you believe it, good for you, but I don't think I believe that. All the way to the FBI. Excuse. And the FBI came back and said it's not possible. Ugh, anyways. These rumors are 100% false. If anyone has real tangible proof, please contact me immediately. My email appears within my TikTok profile. What is true, Ren is a happy, healthy three-year-old. The videos we film together from my account a couple of hours a week are fun and lighthearted. TikTok analytics show that my followers are 76.8% female. That's more than 13 million females, including lots of moms. More than 13 million females view your daughter's account. Okay, I just want to say this. Let's just say there's 1% male figures or male or men, whatever, that actually view your daughter's account. I try to say that there are no female predators. There are female predators. We see men who come out and say that the first time they actually did anything sexual was with their auntie or their house girl or things like this, or like someone in their family, a female in their family. So they are literally female sex traffickers. They are literally female predators. They are females in the dark web. So that's what I don't understand. Even if the percentage of men that viewed your channel or views your videos or watch your daughter's videos are 1%, females too are dangerous. It's just that the society sees us as weaker and more emotional. So obviously, when you're thinking of a predator, when you're thinking of a sexual abuser, you would the first person or the first gender you would go to be a man's gender. I don't know if you guys can remember this advert of a woman holding a child and there was a black man that came out. So the mom was running away and it made it look like she was running away from the black man and the black man was the one that was the kidnapper and there were men and women coming from different angles and it looked like the woman and the child were at risk. But end of the day, the moral of that video literally showed that the woman that was holding the child was 
the predator she was the kidnapper that also shows that women too are very very dangerous as someone who dates a woman my worst heartbreak came from a woman let's start from that i'd never really really cried for men when i started dating women the way i used to cry i used to be like wait is it my fellow woman that is doing this to me so women are dangerous like women when they say what men can do women can do more um sometimes women just do a little bit more and i thank you for watching and for your interest in my family what baffles me is that rumor spreaders express such passionate concern for my daughter Yet law enforcement has found zero real proof about these untrue allegations. Creating videos talking about scurrilous rumors that my three-year-old daughter appears on porn sites isn't proof. Repeating false information over and over will never convert into fact. Doing so is wrongfully smearing my daughter's name and unjustly damaging my reputation. What I've learned from this ordeal, I realize I should have spent more time reading the community's comments. With millions of followers, this is no easy task. If these false rumors have prompted parents to rethink how they let their kids be involved in social media, that is a good thing. Honor and act upon your personal decisions, but please do not mom shame me because we have different parenting styles. I look forward to making more videos with my daughter, and I am committed to making changes when I turn my account comments back on. I will filter them to remove offensive comments and report and block accounts as necessary. Online safety precautions that will remain in effect include disabling the ability to download or duet our videos. Wait. <laughs> First of all, she mentions that oh, she can disable comments, disable comments, disable downloads, blah blah blah. Okay, okay, and guys, we'll go to that. We'll go to that. But like, oh my god, we'll go to that. I'm just keeping ahead of myself because obviously, guys, I've already created a whole script because of this. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. Stopping sexual predators is a job for law enforcement. The TikTok community, including parents, can play an active role in this effort by forwarding real evidence to help the authorities catch the creeps. Let me say it again. If you have real evidence, please contact me. I would do the same for your child. Thanks for listening, and you can read the full version of my statement on my Instagram account, TikTok Ren. The link is in my bio. In summary, what I can hear from that last bit is, it's not my job to raise my daughter. Anyways, this time, it's not just internet detectives that have actually come out to talk, but actual child safety experts and former FBI agents, they're also raising alarms and they're acknowledging the potential exploitation of the channel and the risk of attracting predators. Okay, so as a former FBI agent, I actually want to talk about the controversy surrounding the TikTok social media platform of a little girl named Ren Eleanor. She's about four or five years old and her mom's name is Jacqueline. And there's been a lot of controversy on TikTok um, surrounding the fact that she's basically being exploited um, on this platform. I've looked through it. Um, I have to say, I absolutely believe that she is being exploited. So y'all know I don't post pictures of my daughter on my sort of open uh, social media pages. I have one of her, but it's of her back. I just feel strongly about the fact she really can't like consent to that. And this page is really about me um, and not necessarily about her. That being said, though, I don't have issues with, you know, parents and kids who do these kinds of things together and who sort of know what they're doing. But I looked at this page and this page is all about just a four-year-old. That's it. It's not about her mom and her mom's lifestyle or anything like that. It is all about a four-year-old. And I have a significant problem with that because she really can't consent to that. Um, and the mom is profiting off of this. And I have to wonder, is the mom pocketing all this money or is she giving it to her daughter, which is really who it should go to because the reality is that she's doing the work for the page. Um, mom's just posting. But there's also issues too with some perhaps child predators uh, following the page, commenting on the page, um, and that is also a concern. You have to remember, when you post pictures of yourself, your children, whomever, anyone has access to that. And that's what's happening here. That includes child predators. Um, also, there's some videos of her uh, that people have commented sort of, you know, why are they not flagged? Um, because it could violate community guidelines. And the ones they're talking about are the ones regarding sexual exploitation of minors. I just want to read you 
the definition of how TikTok views that is abuse um, of a position of power or trust for sexual purposes, including profiting financially, socially, sexually, or politically from the exploitation of a minor. So here's the thing. I do believe a minor is being exploited here, but I have noticed that she took down the 4th of July picture um, that was in question, but is not addressing it. So she knows her behavior, in my opinion, is wrong. The mom knows this. Um, I do have to wonder uh, who the majority of her followers are if they are child predators, which I don't know if they are or not. I don't think that they are. Then the reality is, is she is sexually exploiting her child. Um, but I'm guessing that that's why this hasn't been flagged uh, for community guidelines. Unethical? Yes. Is she probably taking money that, in my opinion, probably belongs to her child? Absolutely. And I do think this account is is highly problematic. Many users also suspect Jacqueline of knowingly posting videos for predators. So this is the last video that I'm going to make about Jacqueline Paul, Ren Eleanor's mom. But after spending the weekend kind of diving more into this topic, I made an interesting conclusion. So as we know, Jacqueline has fully monetized her toddler's life and has made her income pandering to creeps on the internet. You know exactly what you're doing. And here's the thing as a man, I'm gonna say the very things that need to be said unfiltered that hopefully the video does not get taken down because you've made a video stating the fact of show me that my daughter is somehow in danger and I will delete these videos and take her off the internet, which we all know what you're doing. She's not physically in danger, but yet she very well could be in the future, but I'll digress from that. But yet she is in danger from what is happening in terms of the internet and men downloading, saving these videos and doing exactly what we know they're doing to your daughter's face, to your daughter's body, to the image of your daughter. Do I need to simplify it? Because I'm going to. I'm not the creep here, but you need to effing hear it. Men, grown men, old creepy men are downloading images, videos of your daughter that you're putting up, things like that, things like her falling backwards, her skirt flying up, her licking on lollipops, pickles, things like that that could be taken as you know what, not to normal people like myself, but to creeps on the internet. And these men are taking their dominant hand, touching themselves vigorously to a point that they feel satis- I can't even say it! To a point that they feel satisfaction. And you're putting this shit out there on the internet like bait. Because it's getting you views, it's getting you money. But at what cost? At what cost? This is your daughter. This is your daughter's image, her face, her body. And you know this is going on. People are telling you. You see it in your own comment section. You see these men commenting this. But she's in no danger. You're right. I guess they have to physically come and touch her for you to do... Would you even do something then? I don't think you would if it was a penny extra for you. But yet as grotesque and terrible as it all is, that's what's happening. These men are doing this and you know that. And as I've stated in a past video, it's men. Yes, it is. And as a man, as a strong man, it takes strong men to make this stop. We have to stand up confront it, stop it. But also, also, it takes mothers to not willingly exploit their children on the internet for a dime and a penny. Now let's go to the dangers of posting children on social media. So many parents, they enjoy sharing photos of their children on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. So while this is a very good way to connect with friends and families and also share precious moments, there are also some important risks to consider. Firstly, sharing these photos can unintentionally disclose personal information about the child, such as their name, like their full name, their date of birth, and their location. And this information could be exploited by malicious individuals for identity theft or other harmful purposes. Secondly, another point that I want to mention is that when once a photo is posted online, it can be very difficult to control who sees it or where it ends up in. 
even though there are privacy settings that have been put in place, there's always a risk of the photo being shared beyond the intended audience, potentially leading to unforeseen consequences for the child in the future. Like Ren's mom, she came out and said that she disabled comments. And like I said before, okay, and... I don't get it like potato potato i mean the videos can still be saved no and every smartphone last i checked at least let's say 97 or 98 percent of smartphones they have the ability to screen record so how much of a difference does that make does that make any difference i don't think that makes a difference don't get me wrong i understand that this is her bread and butter i understand that this is her bread and butter but is it your bread and butter at the expense of your own child? Because I can guarantee you if she decides to switch to make like videos of only herself or other innocent looking like videos of Ren, even though it may not get as much views as it's getting now, I can assure you that she will still get like let's say 8 million views or 5 million views or even 2 million views which is still a lot of money when TikTok pays her. If that makes sense. She's been doing this job since 2019 and I'm sure she's had so much money that is stacking up in her bank account. What is even sadder is that the videos that shows Ren in suggestive positions actually has more saves and views than just normal content that shows her. Like, it's so sad and it's very, very evident that predators are the ones that are literally watching this girl online. Furthermore, the online world is a breeding ground for predators who may use this information and images shared on social media just to target children. Even seemingly innocent photos can also be manipulated and used inappropriately by these predators with harmful intentions. One major concern regarding family vlogging is that it often goes unnoticed and because it often goes unnoticed, this is a risk that it poses for children from predators. Platforms such as YouTube and TikTok are unfortunately known for having issues with predators. Let me tell you guys something. There's a report by the New York Times that uncovered that predators would leave cryptic comments on family vlogs to signal to other predators. Even what is more troubling is that there is this discovery that the YouTube algorithm tends to cater to predators by recommending videos featuring children to those searching for inappropriate content, allegedly. When I researched this and I saw this, I was like so confused because I was like, last I checked YouTube, they are very, very strict about the content you post online. Because first of all, before I post any content, YouTube tells me to declare if there are like any words that are like offensive and the gravity of the offense of the word. So it just determines if you get paid or if you not get paid. So that is why I'm like, I'm so confused that when I saw this, I was like, huh? Obviously, people can manipulate things. Additionally, demographic data also reveals that a significant portion of viewers and subscribers to channels showcasing children and middle-aged men. Yo, middle-aged men enjoying children's content. Children who are featured prominently on social media may also face risk of cyberbullying and harassment from their mates as well as potential embarrassment or discomfort as they grow older and become more aware of their digital footprint. Honestly, we need to do better in Joey Swole's voice. Lastly, it's very important to consider the child's consent when sharing their photos online. Ren, she is like literally a four-year-old child. She was born into this. Jacqueline started this account or this channel in 2019 and Ren is four years old. That means she was born like 2020. From when Ren came into the world, she has been creating content. She's been working consistently almost every week, if not every week. So obviously, she would think that this is normal. She would think this is normal, but in hindsight is not. Children may not fully understand the implication of having their images shared publicly and their right to privacy should be respected by parents or guardians. In conclusion, while sharing photos of children on social media can be a way to celebrate special moments, it's also very crucial for parents to be very mindful of the potential risks that are involved. By taking steps to protect a child's privacy and safety online, 
Parents should also ensure that their child's online presence remains something that's very positive and very secure. Guys, this is 15 minutes of recording. Oh my days, I'm tired and I'm hungry. That being said, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you for hanging out with me today. And yeah, kindly share this video, like and comment if you have any other thing you want me to talk about. That being said, I would see you guys next week. I have to go and eat. It is... Oh my days, it's 6 25 pm and I need to eat. I've not eaten. <laughs> so, see you guys. Bye.